Welcome back to Network Africa. Health officials in Zimbabwe say heavy rains in recent months has led to a dramatic increase in cases of malaria. They say more than 150 people have died of the disease over the past two months. About 90 cases of malaria have also been recorded during that period. The manager for Zimbabwe's malaria control program says the heavy rains have increased the breeding ground for mosquitoes spreading the, spread the disease. The World Health Organization has learned a new ethics guidance meant to meet specific standards on the way people affected by tuberculosis are treated. Countries already implementing the WHO and TB strategy, a blueprint to end the epidemic by 2030, will be expected to meet to set out ethical standards aimed at protecting rights of patients. Governments and health workers will need to provide patients with needed social support and ensure health workers operate in a safe environment among other key points. Tuberculosis kills more people each year than any other infectious disease, including HIV and AIDS. In 2015 alone, it is estimated to have killed 1.8 million people, according to WHO. The lung disease is caused by a bacterial infection and is normally treated with a combination of antibiotics. But extensive overuse of antibiotics worldwide has led to a rise in drug-resistant superbug strains. The new WHO ethics guidance also addresses contentious issues such as the isolation of contagious patients, the rights of TB patients in prison, discriminatory policies against migrants affected by TB. We are releasing today a new ethics guidance to allow countries and help countries implement the NTB strategy following proper ethical standards and respecting the human rights of everyone. Poverty, malnutrition, poor housing and sanitation compounded by other risk factors such as HIV, tobacco, alcohol use and diabetes can put people at heightened risk of TB and make it harder for them to access care. More than a third of people with TB go undiagnosed or unreported. Some receive no care at all and others access care of questionable quality. The heaviest burden is carried by communities which already face social economic challenges, migrants, refugees, prisoners, ethnic minorities, minors and others working and living in risk-prone settings as well as marginalized women, children and older people. According to WHO statistics, six countries account for 60% of TB cases today with India leading the count, followed by Indonesia, China, Nigeria, Pakistan and South Africa. TB is the number one infectious disease killer today and uh, every single day 5,000 people lose their life because of tuberculosis. And TB hits uh, particularly those vulnerable populations that include migrants, refugees, prisoners, uh, people who are marginalized in their societies. Tuberculosis is spread from person to person through the air. When people with lung TB cough, sneeze or spit, they propel the TB germs into the air. A person needs to inhale only a few of these germs to become infected. Gada Wali's graphic designs appears to have gained prominence in Europe, but the 27-year-old Egyptian artist says her heritage has been a major factor contributing to her work. Wali is the first Egyptian woman to be featured on the Forbes list and she believes that her profession can be used as a tool capable of changing the world and preserving cultural heritage. Wali is the first Egyptian woman to be featured on Forbes list of 30 under 30 the arts and she believes that her profession can be used as a tool capable of changing the world and preserving cultural heritage. Wally spoke from her family home in Cairo about her journey to the limelight and showed off some of her award-winning projects. She says she turned her hobby of drawing into a career and later moved a talent online, where she's created a variety of work, including digital landscape of portrait, interactive campaigns, and educational material, mostly based on her heritage and societal upbringing. Her fortune took a turn when she went to Florence, Italy to study for her master's degree in graphic design. There her work caught the attention of one of her professors who encouraged her to apply to the U.S.-based business magazine's annual tally. 
After a long and competitive process, she received an email from the Forbes editor saying she had been chosen out of thousands of applicants. To me, this is an honor, and I believe it is the first time an Egyptian is featured on this list. I'm very happy that the work I submitted is related to Arabic, related to the Egyptian identity. So it makes me very happy that even the work I was awarded on was project related to my identity. Prior to the Forbes accolade, she won the Society of Typographic Art STA 100 Award in 2016, a design competition based in Chicago which looks for the top 100 typography design projects from around the world. The artist says she is anchored by the need to preserve her identity and the heritage from which she came. Wally has designed a 21st century Arabic dictionary called Let's Play, which aims at simplifying the teaching of the Arabic language in order to break through language barriers. She calls it a book with Legos, allowing the user to feel the structure of the letters while learning the language. We need solutions in different areas because our language is getting extinct and our heritage is also becoming extinct. If we do not preserve, document or develop our identity, I believe it could die because we aren't keeping up with the advancements happening around the world. Let's Play is still a prototype and Wally is working on producing it for real-life educational purposes. If successful, the project will be translated and applied to various languages around the world. During her year-long master's program in Italy, Wally had been working part-time for numerous clients back home. Today, having become a somewhat local celebrity, her clients range from agencies, brands, film production houses and schools. Of course, it will differ if it's a brand that wants to deliver something on a product or a startup or school. So the message and how to deliver it differs. Wally's latest venture with a local production house has her designing and producing a movie trailer which she hopes will breathe new life to the Egyptian film industry. And that's it on Network Africa. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Timmy Talk with Fangbin.